So my name is Michael Tsutsumi. I originally trained in Kyoto in Japan in woodwork and Japanese lacquer work. My kintsugi work reflects really the history of making and because I'm trained in this technique of Japanese lacquer, it immediately put me in this bigger picture of people always making things, changing its shapes or surface. And that, in that way, I think I connect with this broader community of humanity. I think that's something that mending comes as opportunity for me. My practice really is about identifying possibilities in things. But I like seeing that possibilities in things that's very ordinary and that's just around us. And I also saw that in my students. So I really like working with the idea that you can see how things can be rearranged or edited or organized to become something else. And I like this way of working and Kintsugi is perfect for demonstrating that or exercise in that process. I think making and mending is vital to communities because it really creates an opportunity for people to have a shared purpose, but also to reveal things that are a resource that is hidden. And I think making mindset is something that really guides us to see that somehow. So in that way, Mending and making connects together for me. Mending is part of the making mentality, and I think there's a huge potential for applying that to community. I think it would be good to ask the students to think about how they see things as a potential material for something else. Maybe you could work with something that's no longer functions in its original purpose. You know, it could be broken or it could stop, have something that stopped working. That actually you can stop there before trying to fix it. You can see how something stopped working, why that it's broken and how it was made. You know, sometimes when something gets broken, you understand the intention of how this object was made. So quite typically designers like that kind of moments because that really explains to you um, why things are made in the way they are. And only when something breaks, then you start to see certain decision makings and process. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to understand this kind of whole chain of events and decision making. But also, then once you see something, say, physically broken into parts, start to see affordance, maybe. If the purpose is to restore its original function, you have to approach it differently, but you can also think of it as something, maybe you can make it into something else then it is really about identifying affordance, you know, like uh, inbuilt functionality in things uh, beyond its originally assigned function. So maybe that could be interesting for the students to think about it, just to see things beyond its set purpose that was originally given. In that way, you can really expand, you know, uh, mending into seeing different things creatively. Um, I think uh, Bridget Harvey is definitely the person to look at because she um, and I curated this show called the Department of Repair um, in 2015. And her work is really um, broad in a way that it looks at the repair, but in a way that how it's the practice of repair sits in the society as a whole, but also how the mindset of a maker who really works with materials and have this openness to really understand what materials are like. And when it comes to mending or remaking 
and uh, there's wealth of information uh, around her practice, so it's really, really useful, I think. But if you really want to look at how artists work with materials, I, I am a big fan of Japanese um, movement called Monoha, M-O-N-O-H-A, and that means school of materials or school of things. And they really approached materials as they are and took, say, um, materials out of its context to show its characteristics. And they do very simple intervention, say using earth or timber, um, then create amazing effects. So I think it'd be really interesting for students to have a look at it. Um, how much materials has its own vocabulary that you can work with. I think it's useful.